Thank you, Art, Mr. Mr. Kokorian, and, and Todd. It's an honor to be here. Uh, thank CIS for sponsoring this event. Um, just want to talk about a few of these dynamics and place them in the context of a non-detained court setting for you. Uh, I'm going to get into some, some numbers for you. All of these are available uh, either in Built to Fail or in Courting Disaster, complete with graphs, so you can actually see the numbers and know the sources for those numbers. But all of these numbers have been provided through government reports. Uh, what we've done is, is merge them, crunch them, so that you can actually see the dynamics taking place here. Um, you know, immigration is a, is a uniquely American uh, 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 enterprise as well as a, a, a tradition. Uh, it's one of the most powerful dynamics in our nation, and often our immigration uh, mechanisms are overmatched by people wanting to take advantage and, and willing to game our laws uh, to enter the United States for sometimes just to find a job and other times to do bad things when they get here. Uh, you can arguably uh, uh, consider that the, the Immigration and Nationality Act is a cornerstone of federal law. Now, let me give you uh, some of the dynamics over all of this. The U.S. has 5 percent of the world's population and attracts 20 percent of its legal immigrants. Um, the, um, uh, the fact that we are often overmatched uh, in a, in a non-detained setting has to do with good stories being provided by smugglers. Uh, I was on the court in Miami, uh, and what we would see in Miami would be stories uh, concocted by a smuggler, uh, complete with funeral pictures of a family member who, would, who had allegedly been murdered, um, or even worse, a family member lying in what we would call a recovery basket with a body visible uh, in the basket uh, with a story to explain how that person got there and why the person seeking asylum was in the United States. Uh, very well orchestrated uh, and only very good cross-examination from a, uh, a DHS prosecutor could reveal uh, the open seams in those stories uh, and enable uh, a judge uh, to make a decision. And the old saying is in the law uh, that a judge cannot adequately decide a case if it has not been adequately tried. And in the context of terrorism or drug cartels or crime syndicates, uh, when you have money backing up those uh, initiatives, uh, you're going to have very complex, well-researched stories. Uh, we had stories coming out of Colombia, uh, complete with death notices and obituaries uh, and people claiming that they had been fleeing the FARC uh, and this is uh, on the downside of the FARC's influence. So some people who wanted to make it to the U.S. would um, tack onto their stories of, of a, uh, a narrative of fleeing the FARC. Uh, the FARC was famous for sending uh, uh, consolation cards and messages to people they intended to target for their acti for. Uh, for, for death or for murder or assassination, in exchange for which if you sent them um, to a drop box or to, a, uh, an on a, to an anonymous site, a payment, a ransom in other words, they would leave you alone. So we would see cards, letters uh, concocted, uh, sometimes legitimately, sometimes not so legitimately, in order to justify a claim for asylum in the U.S. Um, I want to give you the, uh, the dynamics of the court system so you understand our immigration courts are not able to do the job they're supposed to do uh, for a lot of reasons, one of which is they're overmatched by the people uh, applying for asylum oft times. Um, and th these are some of the ugly numbers. And these are the numbers that the Justice Department won't tell you uh, because they don't crunch the numbers, so you can actually see the trends that establish dynamics that you can actually follow in a, in a linear manner. Um, built to Fail summarized courts' activities uh, for about the uh, 14 years. That was from 1996 through 2010. Uh, most of those dynamics uh, were distilled 
to a 14-year period. At that time, 40% of all aliens free pending trial failed to come to court. They just disappeared. Uh, the numbers now for the last uh, 21 years, uh, built, uh, built to fail is 14, courting disaster 20, and uh, I updated those numbers with the last court report. So uh, the last court report reveals that that number is held. 37% uh, of all aliens free pending trial never come to court. Or if they do, they vanish sometime before a decision. Uh, the Justice Department has never admitted that, uh, specifically EOIR. Uh, when this story first broke in Miami, uh, with an op-ed piece that uh, they published under, under my name, uh, Mr. Asunia, who was the, uh, at that time the director of the courts, wrote that those numbers were wrong, wrote a letter to the editor, said those numbers are wrong. Those numbers are wrong. Um, in the latest report, they've added a fourth box comparing aliens who were free pending trial, all aliens free pending trial, and compared it to all aliens who, who failed to appear in court. The numbers were exactly the ones we have we have offered for the last year. 2015, 43% of aliens free pending court failed to, come, failed to come to court. In 2016, 39% failed to come to court. Our numbers match up with uh, EOIRs, and they've add, added this new box or this new line to their reports. Um, prior, they'd called this the failure to appear rate or the overall failure to appear rate. Now they call it the in absentia rate, but it's still the same thing. And what they were doing and just follow the math here, it's, I think it's fairly easy. If I put 1 over 10, that's 10%. If I put 1 over 100, that's 1%. And that's what they were doing. They were adding aliens in detention pending trial to all aliens free pending trial and drove down the failure to appear rate, misleading Congress, the Justice Department, and the public for what the real dynamics of failure to appear was and is. So, uh, in, let's see, in 19, uh, 2009, 2010, 2011, in that time frame, they said that the failure to appear rate was only 11%. You get that number by adding the aliens in detention. It was really 32. It was 200% more than they told Congress. This is a, a travesty. It, 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 it just defeats the high calling of, of, of federal service, and it's unworthy of us. Uh, I'm just going to give you the dynamics for the last 21 years, and you can see that if somebody wants to game our immigration system, the thing to do is to come in, give a good story, get released, and then never come to court. And has have terrorists been involved in that dynamic? They have. I'm going to give you... Uh, uh, the example of um, Ahmed Farhani, um, he posed a threat well after his entry, um, and he was a lawful permanent resident. Uh, he got caught up in some criminal schemes, uh, uh, drug trafficking, among others. Um, he was placed into deportation proceedings in early 2011. He remained free pending trial. He failed to appear in immigration court and was later arrested but only after discovery of his plan to attack the Manhattan synagogues and the Empire State Building. Uh, Moroccan-born El Mahdi Fathi, or Faithi, um, there's a variation on that theme. He overstayed his student visa. After flunking college in 2009, he disappeared. He was eventually located in Virginia on criminal charges being held there. And despite immigration violations, you know, leaving when his visa has expired, he was eventually arrested. He was eventually turned up in California on felony theft charges. And by this time, he shams an asylum claim, saying that if he is returned to his country, he will be persecuted. That is granted. And what does he do? He promptly leaves jail or promptly leaves uh, immigration court proceedings, goes east and plots to attack a Connecticut federal building in April of 2014. This kind of stuff is right at our doorstep. Over the last 21 years, 49% of all litigants who were free pending trial, and that is 1.25 million out of 2.6 million, were ordered removed. So half the people that we turn loose are ordered removed eventually. Out of this group, 
76% were ordered removed for failing to appear. And that, that number is 952,291 people ordered removed for failing to appear. And the, those who, who did appear, only 24%. In other words, the ratio is this. The ratio is that of those orders of removal issued in a non-detained setting, three out of every four decisions, removal decisions, are for failing to appear in court. 24% or 25%, if you do it by quarters, are people who actually showed for their trials and were ordered removed. And that's 302,000 people. In other words, the vast number of orders of removal in non-detained settings are for people who never show for court. Courts are only deciding on the merits 302,000 cases over the last 21 years. So, in 2016, 39% failed to appear. How did that work? Well, we had 34,268 people fail to appear out of 86,881, 39.3%. What did the Justice Department, or actually EOI, EOIR do? They added the aliens in detention. That's what they did. And that turned out to be a shrunk number down to in the, in the 20s. Um, and I, but this is the worst example. And this is where, where we can really be gamed right after 9-11. In 2005 and 2006, 60%, the precise statistic is 59% of all aliens free pending trial never came to court. And this is within, this is in 2005 and 2006. And the numbers are the same. Two, 216,000 people failed to appear. How am I doing, Marguerite? How many minutes I got left? One minute? Thank you. I'm going to stop right there. Um, I really appreciate uh, the National Press Club ho hosting us today uh, and Mr. Kerkorian uh, through CIS sponsoring this event. Um, the numbers just don't add up. And I think we're seeing in EOIR some willingness to be candid about these numbers. Uh, I've never mentioned names. This is the first time I've ever mentioned a name, but that was in direct response to a denial that those numbers were correct. I've got a copy of that letter sent from uh, the director of the courts to the Miami Herald, which I'm happy to give any of you who want to see it. So thank you for being here to listen today.